a P series. So P series, we are focusing on the power. We have a series and then one divided by n to the P. This series is convergent if P is greater than one, diverge if P is less than or equal to one. So when P is greater than one, I have an example for you. So let's say P is equals to 10 and the base is equals to 50. So in the denominator, you have 50 raised to the 10th power. So the denominator is huge, one divided by a huge value that is so close to zero. So when the nth term is equals to zero, what are you adding? So you are adding numbers up one at a time, right? So by the end, you reach to the nth term, you are pretty much adding zeros, all right? So think about this. Let's say you have uh, 20 numbers in front of you in ascending order. You add them up one at a time. The first one plus the second one, the, the sum of the first two plus the third one, so on and so forth, right? So by the time you reach to the last couple numbers, they are really just a zeros, right? So you are adding up zeros. So that means the series must be convergent. What about P is less than or equal to one? So if you pick a value between zero and one, that is not too obvious. I pick P equals to one half and then I let the N equals to 100. You have one divided by, so by the way, the one half power means a square root. The square root of 100 that is equals to one over 10, that doesn't look like divergent, right? But this one, I can convince you a little bit. One over 10 is not close to zero, all right? One over 10 is still not close to zero. So that means you are still adding up some serious quantities to the sum. So that's why the series is divergent. And then the next one is even is more obvious. If you let the power be negative less than one, that is more obvious. Look, if you change the one half power to negative one half, so that brings the whole thing down to the denominator immediately. Then you have one divided by a denominator. So as a result, the 100 raised to a half power will be flipped to the numerator. So when that happens, then you will get a so much bigger quantity. Imagine that the n is not equal to 100. Imagine the n is equal to uh, a 10,000 or 20,000 or 1 million. In that case, you will have a much, much bigger quantity at the end of a series. So when you reach to the end of the when you reach to the last few terms, imagine this, you have uh, 20 numbers, you want to add them up. When you reach to the last couple terms, the quantities are so big. When you add them to the sum, the sum must be infinity. So therefore, the series must be divergent. So that is how I interpret the series. And then I have four examples for you. I want to discuss each of those P series. Let's start. The first one. So the first one is number one. So we have a series that goes from one to infinity, one divided by n to the raised to the square root of two, right? So this is a P series. And the power is equals to root two. Root two is greater than one, just a little bit greater than one. That means the entire series is convergent. So that's how easy number one is. And then number two, you have a I just expanded the series for you. So in this case, you have to look for the pattern. So number two, we have one plus one over eight plus one over 27 plus one over 64 plus one over 125, so on and so forth. So since this is a P series, oh, by the way, on the test, you they are not, they, sometimes they might not tell you this is a P series, then it is your responsibility to figure it out. So our, our correct, our path is I am thinking about a number raised to a fixed exponent, a number, a base raised to a fixed exponent. The one, the one is easy. The one is just one raised to the third power. And then this, the eight will be two raised to the third. Again, the exponent must be fixed. And then three raised to the third power. And then uh, four raised to the third power. And then five raised to the third power. Wow, how do you figure this out in the middle of the test? The answer is you have to do your homework, you have to study, all right? This type of series can be very complicated. It can be super complicated. This one is easy. And then keep going. So overall, the pattern is we have one divided by base raised to the n power and the base is changing from one to infinity, then this is a P series. And then what is the power equals to? The power is equals to three, three is greater than one, so therefore the series is convergent. When the power is greater than one, look, 
you are making the denominator so big, so therefore the sum is really determined by the first couple terms. By the end, you reach to the end of term, you are just adding zero to partial sums. All right, so that's why the series is convergent. And then number three, number three is a good problem because I can break one series into two series. Number three, we have a series n goes from 1 to infinity, we have the square root of n plus 4 divided by n square. So that is equal to, I'm going to break this down into two series. The first one is square root of n divided by n, the second one is 4 divided by n square. So there are two power series right here. So first of all, the first one, so number one and number two, number one is we have a sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, so that is one half power on top, a first power on the bottom, so that is uh, n, one half minus the first power in the denominator, so that is equals to negative one half, right? So, sorry, not negative one half. Um, the bottom is a square, that is my mistake, so one half minus two, so that will be negative three half, so negative three half is we have in the denominator. So this is a P series. And then P is equals to 3 half that is greater than 1. So therefore, the series is convergent. How about the second piece? The second piece, we have others n equals to 1 infinity 4 divided by n squared. So this is a P series. And then P is equals to 2 that is greater than 1. So they are convergent. So basically, when you find the series, so we have a sum plus another sum, so which is a real number plus another real number, so therefore the sum must be a real number, so therefore the entire series is convergent. So that would be number three, and then number four we have a negative 10 power, so let's do that. So number four we have the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 divided by n raised to the negative 10, a positive pen that looks like a positive to me, negative 10. So this is a P series and P is equal to negative 10 that is less than or equal to one. So therefore the series is divergent because what is the, how, how does the negative exponent work? So we have one divided by one over n to the 10, which is equal to n to the 10th power divided by one. As n goes to infinity, you have infinity raised to the 10th power that is equal to infinity. So that means you have a few numbers to add. So when by the time you reach to the last couple terms, you are adding up a bunch of infinity. So therefore, the sum must be infinity. So therefore, the entire series is divergent. That's how you interpret this case. All right, so that is the end of this P-series lesson. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think? If you think this is helpful, please like the video, subscribe, share. I appreciate your help. I see you all in the next lesson. Signing out. Take care.